There's Dragon Eye again. Egg fruit behind it. Coffee plants surrounding it. Pineapples growing in amongst it. Dwarf apple bananas. Avocado up the rear. I'll be you right over here. Japanese persimmons up behind it. Right back there with the white fuzzy flowers, that's the ice cream bean, Inga. Over here is Rolinia, that's a relative of the Chirimoyas and the pawpaws. Right here, tucked into the ice cream bean, is cacao, growing nicely. It grows slow for me here, but it does grow. Right over here is carambola, or we call it star fruit. There's a second one right there. Right over there is the Mineola tangelo. Now, my citrus trees are some of the only plants that I have out here um, that are actually purchased and grafted. Um, I have a Valencia orange right over there, too. Here we have dwarf apple bananas uh, growing in a real foresty setting here behind the ice cream bean. Uh, it's over here next to Pulisan. Pulisan is in the lychee family. Looks like a big old black raspberry. Right over there has a Chirimoya with a Rolinia up behind it. And baby coconuts. Um, they aren't liking me too much up here at this elevation, but they are growing. Um, Dwarf Williams bananas. Rambutan over the top. And a whole row of macadamia nut trees. Um, growing slowly, but doing okay. Here is that favorite Hawaiian canoe plant, the mountain apple. Pretty flowers, nice looking tree. Uh, more Rolinia out to the front of it here. Flanked by Mame apple. Surrounded by red leaf philodendrons and Chinese bananas back here in the jungle. Pineapples scattered throughout, big fruit, a yellow rambutan tree, more pineapples, and behind it over here some very happy pigeon peas from Puerto Rico. We use these to make that uh, Puerto Rican rice they call junta rice, uh, similar to uh, Spanish rice, but it has pigeon peas in it. Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. Satsuma mandarins. There's cacao. Academia nuts. Flanked by kukui nut in the background, the candle nut. That's one of the Hawaiian canoe plants. Suriname cherry. There's dwarf Samoan coconut. And the shorter palms there are the native Hawaiian prichardias. Right here is a Moro blood orange that is turning into a veritable monster. Um, to the side right there is my blackberries. Next to and behind them are my dragon fruits. All right here is my Jamaican lily koi. This is passion fruit from Jamaica with orange you know, fruits. Behind it are the two oldest Jibota cabas on the place. Here, believe it or not, are actually wine grapes. <laughs> That's funny, huh? Uh, there's some of the landscaping up the front of the house over here. Uh, lots of hibiscus and good stuff. Out here in the front yard, we have mostly you know, coffee plants and bananas. There's some taro out there and a couple of experimental apple trees with some jackfruit. But uh, most of it is just coffee and bananas out here. Uh, coffee out here is suffering from the drought in Hawaii worse because these plants are younger and their roots are not spread as well as the ones in the back. Right here along the front of the house I like to grow flowering shrubs but I have integrated them with blueberries in the foreground which are just beginning to come into bloom. Yes, you can grow blueberries in Hawaii if you can keep the birds off of them. Over here we have bougainvilleas with hibiscus, with uh, exora shrubs, and rosemary, uh, more blueberries, and this guy right here is a grumachama. It's uh, one of the eugenias from South America. It's got an edible berry on it. Over here we got some ground orchids and some bromeliads. 
Got us some Hawaiian tea, pineapples, dracenas, lemongrass, limes up the background, satsuma mandarins. Behind the house, um, I have some banana plantings. I also have my nursery tables. This is where I grow everything in the backyard. Here is a giant mound of lily koi vines. Um, they actually came out of my compost heap and they are supported on uh, mango trees and avocado trees and papayas that all came up out of the compost when I tossed the seeds. And uh, then when I tossed the lily koi seeds out here, they exploded, completely covered and killed all the trees. They're using them for a trellis. So we got kind of a self-generating garden right here. That kind of stuff happens a lot in Puna. And I have some of the giant lily koi here too. I haven't harvested this one yet. We'll see what I think of the fruit. The regular lily koi here is quite delicious. It's in this uh, brief, nearly leafless stage of winter at the moment, but this is one of my oldest chirimoyas. They seem to be growing pretty well here. We'll find out. Totally experimental, folks. Mango isn't always the best choice for the rainy side of the Big Island, but I have quite a few of them. Every time I get a hold of some good local mango seed, I stick it in out here. We're doing pretty well with the trees at least. They grow well. Even if I never harvest enough good fruit off it to make it worthwhile, mango wood is great. Beautiful stuff. Right here is my one and only mango steam tree. Uh, coming along pretty nicely. I was getting chewed here for a while, but she's doing good now. Uh, I finally figured out that these things need shade to get going. We're actually tucked between dwarf bananas coffee plants, an avocado tree, and this mass of lily koi over here. So then Ellen's got her orchids tight and everything. So here we have a uh, Valencia orange uh, with an Oncidium orchid tied into it. Sweet potatoes ramble everywhere between the crops. One of my experimental ground covers. Anthurium. Anthurium has also been a fairly successful ground cover. Right here is my one and only soursop, the guanabana. It's again in the uh, Anonesia with the chirimoyas, the rolinias, and the pawpaws, and the atomoyas, and the custard apples. Here's one of my better looking star apples. Again, this one came from a seed. A friend of mine had a really wonderful grafted star apple. I picked seeds out of it and planted them about five years ago. Coconuts. Easy enough to grow around here. Pick the nuts up, washing in down in Lower Puna up along the beaches. Usually have a top sprouted out of them in a root. Just stick them in the ground. Here is the uh, betel nut palm. It's kind of an interesting looking thing. Uh, it's really got a nice trunk to it. It makes a uh, um, stimulant narcotic nut that's consumed in Southeast Asia. It has pretty good market here on the island too, but man, I tell you, it's heck on your teeth. I'll stick to coffee. And a couple of baby betel nuts right here I grew from seed. Well, these guys right over here, really an experiment. Cherry trees in Hawaii. That's a weirdy, huh? This is the uh, uh, Kapulin cherry. From the Andes. It's actually a subtropical prunus. Makes a cherry. Uh, not as good as a Bing or anything, but it's one of the only possible cherries that might grow here. We're in our uh, briefly deciduous winter time period with them, so they look pretty scruffy, but uh, these things really grow. Uh, I've had to prune the heck out of them. The trees are about four years old. They've been cut in half twice. My goodness. If nothing else, it makes a lot of wood. So there we have it, folks. The before. The after. Bill's garden on the island. Happy gardening. Angles.